dark side of the Force is a pathway to many abilities some consider to be unnatural. <laughs> Hey, what's up, guys? Welcome back to another episode of Sith Talk. Today we have on the show Marley from the Bounty Saber Instagram and YouTube channel. How you doing, Marley? I'm doing pretty freaking great. How are you doing? I'm good. Thanks for coming on. So tell us Thank a little you bit. Thank for having me. Oh, of course. Tell us a little bit about your channel and where we could find you at. All right. Well, I do a little bit of YouTube. Mostly I post like what I post on Instagram and on TikTok on there. It's kind of a backup, but I am trying to get into it a little bit more. Um, but obviously I'm a lot more active on my Instagram, which is where you're going to find me basically every single day posting on my Instagram story and every now and then on TikTok as well. Nice. Awesome. So for you guys watching, I'm going to put the link to her Instagram and her channel down in the description. Definitely go show some love. Now, Everybody that comes on, we start off with three questions. You ready? Okay. All right. No pressure, huh? <laughs> so the first one is, what is your favorite Star Wars movie? Oh, easy. Revenge of the Sith. I'm very biased because I started off watching the prequels first, but mm -hmm. Revenge of the Sith. Nice. Why, Rogue One why? is a close second, though. Oh, interesting. So why Revenge mm -hmm. of the Sith? So I originally started off watching Star Wars um, in chronological order. So oh. I watched, you know, episodes one, two, three, and I really loved just Anakin in general and his character, like just his downfall, quite literally yeah. one of the best things we've ever seen. So mm -hmm. I love that. And the I struggle with being able to really keep my attention on something. So uh -huh. the prequels do an amazing job at keeping my attention with all those <laughs> lightsaber fights here and there, which is yeah. why it's so hard for me to watch the original trilogy. So, really revenge of the sith all the duels in that just make it for me the oh, yeah. dialogue might be a little weird but it makes yeah. it for me so after revenge of the sith you saw those first three what did you see next was it rogue one then a new hope so i i think i ended up watching a new hope and then i kind of stopped on the seat or the original trilogy for a bit uh -huh. and then i ended up watching um Clone Wars and like Rebels and stuff. Mm -hmm. And I didn't fully like merge into it until like later on until COVID until yeah. I was like, you know what? I'm going to watch everything in chronological order. And especially because oh. COVID happened after the sequels came out. So yeah. the sequels kind of helped bring the hype. It wasn't for too long, but it helped bring the hype yeah. for a bit. Yeah, and yeah. Um, so I was like, you know what? I'm going to do it. Disney Plus was introduced when I was in high school. And I was yeah. like, yeah, I'm going to watch everything. Mando helped a lot, too. Oh, yeah. So, oh, yeah. That's great. Awesome. Yeah. So the next question is, and I think I know the answer to this, but what is your favorite Star Wars show? You want to guess? <laughs> is it The Bad Batch? It is The Bad Batch, yes. <laughs> yeah. So I love it so much. Why is it your favorite? So, I mean, I think most people, when they talk about their favorite show, they think of like the best show, right? Yeah. To me, when I think of favorite show, I think of like how much I enjoyed it and how much mm -hmm. I connected to the show. And at the time when Bad Batch season one was coming out, I wasn't fully aware that it was coming out until I saw posters from like a couple days before May 4th when it came out in 2021. And yeah. I was like, you know what? This is pretty cool. My mental health was nowhere near okay. And I was just like, you know what? I'm going to keep watching this. I got attached to the characters so quickly because I was looking for a sense of comfort and I was like, oh my goodness, this is so good. It was distracting me and I was yeah. like, this is so cool. We get to see clones. Like clones in general are like some of the best things in all of Star Wars. And then seeing what happens yes. at, uh, after Order 66, which is yeah. like one of the saddest things in Star Wars. I know, um, I know. Yeah, so I just became so attached to it. I went week by week. I love the characters. I love... Mm -hmm. All the plot lines, all the like, even what people consider to be filler episodes. Yeah. To me, it was always just comfort. It was a little bit of development, and it brought me a lot of comfort. Like one of my ep favorite episodes is uh, "Cut and Run," um, which is when Omega Ooh. she. Do you remember with when they go and visit Cut and Sue? It's yes. such a comfort episode yes. for me. Yes. I love it so so yeah. much, and she realizes like, oh, this is this is what my life is gonna be like now. 
And yeah, I really, really enjoyed it. I have a huge connection to it just because it brought me so much happiness. And yeah. also, Bad Batch is the reason why I'm making content today. So it started off my entire content creation process. So that's why I give it a big plus. <laughs> See, that that's awesome because like it has so many meanings to you. Like everything where you were at in life, like you, you enjoy it. And then you started where, creating content because of it. So that's so dope. Now, you said you love clones. I love clones like so much. Who are your top three favorite clones? I, like, because you can't just have one clone. So like, Ooh. who are your top oh, three right. clones out of all Clone Wars and Bad Bat, like out of everything? Like, who's your three? Oh, this is so hard. Why are you yeah, doing this to yeah. me? <laughs> It'd be tougher if I said okay. who's your favorite clone, but I'm going to give you three and then I'm going to tell you my no, three. No, you'd be surprised. That's easier. <laughs> really? Yeah. Tech is my favorite clone. <laughs> Tech? Um. Yeah. Um, nice. I will say, if you count, a lot of people don't count Omega. But if you count Omega, she's I still clone, think she is a clone. Yeah. But a lot of people don't think because she's not like a carbon copy of them. Yeah. Um, I would say like tech Omega and then I know this is very generic, but Rex, like I think because he was given so much like plot in the clone mm -hmm. wars, we had more reason to love him. Unlike uh, other clones that we saw for like maybe one or two episodes, they weren't yeah. really given too much plot armor and then they're just kind of gone. Uh, so I'd say those three, those three are probably the best for me. <laughs> And it's funny, my probably favorite clone is w one you just described that was only in one or two episodes and was gone. But not my number one clone, and I love this man to death, is 99. Remember 99? Oh, yes. Of I course. Love of course. 99. So he's my number oh. one. He has so much heart. He, ah. Oh. So 99. Oh, such a good choice. Fives, because fives literally almost stopped order 66 like fives is awesome and then rex like oh, yeah. rex is just he's been everywhere i love rex man rex is oh, rex yeah. so rex um, is rex yeah oh uh, yeah that's awesome oh yeah i was gonna mention fives too because his entire arc was just beautiful yeah it was so beautiful like him confronting palpatine yes. excuse me what that was so good um, Yeah. but yeah like a lot of a lot of characters don't get as much love as they deserve and obviously since bad batch is my favorite show and it's centered around clones it's it has to be tech <laughs> yes so the last question i had is who's your favorite star wars character period anakin skywalker nice nice yeah. why why I, anakin i have to go with it so i can go about answering this question in the most girly pop way and also uh -huh. the most like, like <laughs> filled with facts. First of all, like I mentioned, I watched um, Star Wars as a kid, and I watched the original three, like the in chronological order, the first three movies, right? Mm -hmm. So I was forced to watch uh, Phantom Menace at, at a daycare growing up by one of my friends. He just brought his little like, uh, <laughs> what do you call it? A DVD player. I don't know. You you definitely yeah. know what a DVD player yeah, yeah, is. Yeah, of course, of course, yeah. <laughs> But, um, so I, I ended up loving that so much. He forced us to watch the other two movies and I had such an interest in Anakin. Mm -hmm. One, when I watched Attack, Attack of the Clones, I was like eight years old. And then when you're that young, you don't really realize what crushes are until you finally have one. Yeah. He was like, Attack of the Clones, Hayden Christensen, Anakin Skywalker was the first time I ever experienced a crush on anyone. I was like... <gasps> I want him. And <laughs> yeah. so obviously I really loved him. So that's from like a girly pop perspective. Mm -hmm. From an actual like fact and like plot perspective. I think seeing him rise and then fall and then mm. everything that happens in the Clone Wars, just because he was given, I know it's a little biased, but because he was giving given so much information, so much plot to him. Mm -hmm. I love seeing his his personality, especially in the Clone Wars. Like Clone Wars, Anakin is my favorite Anakin. Yeah, I love him so much in that. Um, how funny he is! Um, how relatable he can be, where he's just kind of broken down, and he he no one believes in him. And I've been there. Like it it sucks, and I I try like I think about it so often. Like realistically, you were in his footsteps, like in his shoes. What would you do? 
And yeah. it's such an interesting thing. When people think of like what ifs, it's always about Anakin. And it's for a good reason because yeah. he's like him near everyone's favorite character, one of the best characters in all the Star Wars. So that is why I love him so, so much. What did you think in you so I'm pretty sure you watched the Ahsoka show, right? So what did you think when he popped up at the end of episode four and then episode five was all Anakin? Like, did you just go nuts? Oh, I went crazy. I was at a friend's house watching that and we just sat there and I was like screaming the entire time. Yeah. Like seeing him at the end of what was episode four, right? Four, yeah. Episode four, that was sick. But like I told you, Clone Wars Anakin is my favorite. Seeing him in Clone Wars, uh, live action Clone Wars armor, armor. was like a dream come true. I loved it. And the way they implemented his character into the storyline of Ahsoka's was just amazing. I really liked what they did. The yep. flashbacks, everything. It was just, it was beautiful. I was screaming. I was like crying. <laughs> I could not believe what I was watching. Yeah. At the end of episode four, because I did reaction videos, I was, I, I screamed when I heard him say, hello snips i was like no and then like uh, uh, well first off her waking up in the world between worlds was already insane but then hearing oh. hayden and then seeing him i was shocked and then just that whole next episode it was just it blew me away i thought we were gonna get hayden for like three four or five minutes it was the whole episode and then we got rex and then we oh it was just so good man oh that that one week I feel you. That one week, like everybody was happy. It was it was rare when everybody on the internet seemed pretty happy and satisfied from that week to the next week, which is rare nowadays in Star Wars. Super rare. Oh, super, super rare. And it felt so nice because it felt like, you know, we were finally that community that we all miss where it's very welcoming, right? Yep. So it was just nice talking to everyone and seeing everyone's perspectives perspectives on it. It was just so beautiful. And then you know what warms up my heart more about like about that? What? What I love so much. Hayden loved it so much. Oh yes. He he loved it. He's like, I want to do more Star Wars projects. I'm up for it. He loves yep. all the love and attention that he's getting now. And he, in my opinion, wholeheartedly, like he deserves it. But yes, it makes oh, you yeah. even happier when like someone like him who unfortunately was hit real hard by the by the hate in the early 2000s yep. and now is coming back and seeing him really really enjoying his character and you see everything he's doing now like he's going to a lot of like conventions he's uh doing that empire thing that happened in New yeah York. like yep. he's enjoying it and it makes me so happy because he is one of the biggest reasons why i got into star wars for just being so good looking yeah so <laughs> Have you met so, Hayden yet? Like at, like a photo op or autograph? Oh my no. god. Oh my goodness. Don't wait no, until you Coast. do it. Yeah. yeah. So he, he is over East here Coast. a lot. You guys are I am lucky. spoiled. But um whenever you do, like I've met him three times, and every time it feels the same, like amazing. The minute you shake his hand and he locks eyes with you, he like takes a part of your soul and you feel like your best friends. It's it's insane. And like, yeah, it could get pricey. But if he's by me, I will go meet him every time because it's such a special thing. And like I never used to do photos and autographs, but like when people start passing away and then you can't like when Carrie Fisher passed away, when Stanley passed away and there would always be at these shows. Now it's like I'm not taking nothing for granted. And if they're there, mm -hmm. I'm going to meet them because, like, you never know. So I can't wait to the day you that, eventually meet oh, Hayden. Yeah. It's going to change your life. So the next thing I wanted to get into was lightsabers. So I know you're big on lightsabers. So oh, yeah. how did you I, get into that? I am so – I so um, I started off – I basically, it started off with Star Wars TikTok. Um, back mm -hmm. then, Star Wars TikTok in, like, 2020, 2021, pandemic area – uh, era that mm. was a time where I was getting into Star Wars a little bit more you know I couldn't socialize with a lot of people Bad Batch was coming out I was like you know what yeah. I'm gonna go look at Star Wars TikTok I saw creators such as I think you know who this is Slayas uh, Leia Martinez yep. yep I saw her uh, saber spin I also saw Carly King saber spin yep. I saw a bunch of other people saber spinning and I was like you know what I really 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 want one 
So at the time, I obviously didn't know anything about lightsabers compared to what I do know now. It's yeah. been like two years or more than that, two, three years since then. And um, I... I pretty much like I got my first lightsaber. I bought like a baselet from TXQ on AliExpress. And mm. I was like, you know what? This is the coolest thing ever. I recorded my, I have my reaction somewhere. Like I recorded it on Snapchat or something. And I was like, this is yeah. the coolest thing ever. Like I have a lightsaber. Like yeah, I grew yeah. up hitting my cousins with pool noodles. Like yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I wanted a lightsaber so badly. Um, Eventually, I started learning to saber spin, and that was also a lot of fun. I did saber transitions, and mm -hmm. um, I bought my first NeoPixel, uh, which I technically, like, I I picked the parts, and I based it off of Leia's saber, because at the time, Leia's was my oh. favorite lightsaber. Still uh -huh. is a very close second. Um, and I, I love that NeoPixel so, so much. And eventually, I did get a... Um, a replica that was given to me. I decided to make a video on it. It was Obi-Wan's uh, replica. That was my first one ever. Mm. And then I got contacted by Saber Theory and they're like, hey, dude, we really love your video. How would you like, like, you know, uh, reviewing like a Saber, any Saber? And I was like, wait, I get to choose. And they're like, yeah, you get to choose whatever you want. And I was like, I, I was like, Leia's, Leia's, yeah, I'm choosing yeah. Leia's without a doubt, right? So, I just kept going from there. It got attention from other uh, saber companies. And then I built up a reputation as well. Mm -hmm. And over time, obviously, I, I built up some knowledge about like, you know, saber information, not just like the huge manufacturers, but also like um, high end sabers and yeah. all of that. And all of that goes to like my friends because they're the ones that taught me everything about it. And of course, personal experience. But people yeah. like one of my closest friends, Jacob, he he knows everything about sabers and he teaches me everything I know. I owe him a lot. Like <laughs> I, yeah. I, that's how I got into saber stuff and I love it. I, I don't regret it. I can't believe that my job right now is literally lightsabers. Like <laughs> That's so awesome. So you're doing this full time then right now? Yes. Currently. Yes. Nice, man. That is, that is so cool. Yeah. The, the whole lightsaber thing, it's so, I don't want to say complicated, but if you don't know, there's so much that goes on with all the different levels and all the customizations. It's its own dangerous rabbit hole. And like, it could, it could add up quick, super quick, but they're just so cool and so much fun. Oh man, that's awesome. So I'm still learning a lot. I don't know yeah. everything yet. I I'm learning every single day because there's changes that go into the actual boards. Like yeah. there's updates every now and then you have to learn a whole new thing again. And um, yeah, if it weren't for my friends, I'd be lost. So thanks to them. <laughs> yes. Awesome. So the next thing I wanted to talk about, you went to the bad batch premiere. How, like, how did that go? What was your reaction when you first got that email or call or notification inviting you to go there? Oh my goodness. I got that email and the first thing I thought was, oh crap, this is real. Like I was not only excited to have that opportunity, right? To go uh -huh. to Lucasfilm because it was in San Francisco. It was at the Lucasfilm headquarters. It's not like yeah. the majority of premieres that are in LA because this is like the final season uh, and they literally only ever do big premieres for like... Um, for seasons of like shows, right? Yeah. Especially live action. But with animation, I was super excited because one, I have been around that Yoda fountain like several times. I've been in Ooh. San Francisco a million times. I grew up in the Bay Area. So yeah. to me, it was a dream. So being able to have my first premiere be the show that gave me the inspiration and that push to, to be where I am today, that uh, quite literally saved my life, that... I know it's a bit of an exaggeration, but I really would not be here without Bad Batch. And wow, um, I was freaking out a bit. I was like, oh my God, this uh, is real. Like I called up one of my friends. I was like, I I'm going to San Francisco. I'm going to San Francisco. And they're like, okay, well, you always go to San Francisco. I was like, no, 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 no. I'm going for a premiere this time. And I'm going yeah. for the Bad Batch. And they're like, oh my goodness, I'm so happy for you. And I was super excited. And also, of course, it being at home so close to home it was just another excuse to see my family and yeah. i will take an excuse to go back home like i'm literally going back home in a couple of days just to spring break do i need to be there do i have any plans no but i'm going so <laughs> i was incredibly 
excited. I was shaking. I found out when I was on campus going to my next class, I, I read the email and I could not contain myself in class. I was like texting the entire time. I don't care what was going on on the board, what my, my professor was teaching me. Yeah. It did not matter to me. All that mattered was, hi, Marley. I'm delighted to invite you to the Bad Batch premiere. And I was wow. like, yeah. That was the only thing that mattered to me. And it was, I'm so happy that that was like my first premiere experience because it's my favorite show. So, ah, yeah. one of my best memories ever. <laughs> and I got to take, um, I got to take one of my closest friends, Serena. I actually, the reason her and I know each other is because of Bad Batch. Mm -hmm. uh, we met, I think it was Star Wars Twitter and then kind of TikTok. And we started talking a little bit um, about Bad Batch. And then, it ended up being something where we would either do a watch party or talk about it right then and there or FaceTime yeah. or something for like the first like two seasons. And it was just so amazing. And like the first person I messaged was like, I sent her a screenshot and I told her, you coming or what? Like you Ooh. are coming. She is going from the East coast. So she was not yeah. going to miss out on this. I know, but Oh my goodness. Um, I'm very happy that I was able to take her because she means a lot to me. And then, obviously Bad Batch being the reason why her and I are very close and why yeah. she, I consider her to be family. Oh, it was just, it was so great. So great. <laughs> That's so sick. So then when you guys got there, what was it like? Did you guys get to meet or see like any of the voice actors? Was Filoni there? Like, what was it like? So um, it was very small, but it was uh -huh. still very, very cool. Um, it was pretty much like a screening. And then uh, there was an interviewer who was asking questions to uh, Dee Bradley Baker and Michelle mm. Ang. And uh, they were the only two, obviously, they're like pretty much the only cast members in all of the yeah. Bad Batch. There's still yeah. a lot of other people as well, but they're the two main ones. And Baloney wasn't there, unfortunately. Mm. If he was, I would probably send him my therapy bills, but so he was <laughs> lucky on that one. <laughs> um, but yeah it was still so cool to see like jennifer corbett who is also like one of the relate uh, uh writers there and then brad rao as well one of the yeah. producers and that was just so cool seeing them talk about it and also then also us finding out how the cast went ar uh, went around like finding out the information information themselves because mm -hmm. they were pretty much like unaware about what was going to happen in season three for oh. a long time so it was nice and apparently they did that on purpose to make sure that they fully felt the emotions to yeah. act the way they did and obviously it's paid off so well so far um but it was so great like um i have previously met d bradley baker in the past um at star wars celebration so it was really nice seeing him again i we didn't really get to communicate and like talk to him directly um but honestly all the questions that they were asking were like so great to us so we loved it and just having them a few feet away from us was Oof. just amazing yeah um, oh my goodness the the way they feel they're just like hayden they love what they do so so much and i can yeah. hear the excitement in their voices and the love in their voices and that just that makes us as fans feel a lot better so yeah it was quite an experience that is so cool. Yeah, when I saw you dropped, I, I think you dropped a video on YouTube, right? Like a short little video with like a little bit from there and stuff. When I saw that, I was like, one, I was super happy because I, I watched your other video and I knew that Bad Batch was your favorite. So I was like, wow, she's probably like having the time of her life at the premiere for her favorite show. Like that's, that's like fate. That's insane. That's so cool. Yeah, uh, I still, I still can't believe it. And I... I am so, so thankful that I was given this opportunity because not a lot of people get to say that they went into Lucasfilm headquarters, like that weren't invited yeah. to do that, right? Yeah. Um, I know there's like tours that they do. Uh, one of my best friends actually got invited through like a Girl Scouts tour and everything. So <laughs> I'm still really mad that she ended up going before me, but it's fine. Yeah. <laughs> uh, but, oh my goodness, it was just so great. An amazing experience the lobby itself was beautiful all the props on there yeah. i know you're a prop dude i can tell look at yeah. behind you right now yes oh yes. my goodness dude you would have freaked it was so cool seeing all the props ah it was amazing the statues too the mall statue that i took a video of oh, oh i love darth mall um he's my favorite, favorite he's Sims, my number so. one yeah yes oh, yeah. that's so awesome so oh, you yeah. mentioned you met d bradley baker at celebration how what celebrations have you been to 
I've only been to one. So uh -huh. believe it or not, I've only technically been to two conventions. My first convention ever was Star Wars Celebration in Anaheim in 2022, which is like quite a banger to start off with because yeah. after that, every convention you're going to go to, is it's never going to compare to that. Ever. Yeah. It is never going to compare to that. Actually, um, I think I'm wearing I, the hat. You are. Yeah. Oh my goodness. What a king. What a king. I'm stealing <laughs> that from you. <laughs> but yeah, like it was such an incredible experience meeting him was so cool too it unfortunately was very short because the lines they were pushing everyone through like yeah hey, yeah take a picture and go take a picture and go yep but yep. it was still so much fun and then meeting him i was able to meet I, the the clone wars trio so d bradley mm. baker i saw obviously obviously our amazing anakin skywalker right yeah uh, well our animated one um and then i saw ashley as well uh so our ahsoka and that was just so, 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 so cool. I was freaking out. I was dressed like Padme. I didn't know how to react. Um, Matt Lanter, who voices Anakin, right? Yep. He, he like put his arm around me when we took the photo, and I, I kept freaking out. I was like, oh my god. So my photo is so bad. I hate it. It's still by far one of the one of the photos I hate the most, unfortunately. But it's such an amazing experience. And yeah, he, uh, Ashley was like, well, you should be next to Matt, right? You should be next to An Anakin. So that was really cool. Um, I will say I was really mad that I found out that we were able to redo our photos. I did not know that until the oh, next day. Oh, really? Mm-hmm. So I kind of had a bit of a breakdown a little bit. I was mm. freaking out. I was like, no, all my friends were trying to call me down and be like, it's okay, Marley, you look great. And I was like, I look like I'm freaking out right now because I was, right? Yeah, yeah. Um, but that was a lot of fun. And then Star Wars Celebration, I mean, you would know, was just very, very great. It's unlike any experience I've ever experienced. It's just amazing. It's It feels so nice, finally, like growing up and not knowing many people who really enjoy Star Wars to the extent that you do. And you're not being judged, right? You're going there. You yes. know, every single person in that room, they're all nerds like you. Every single one yep. of them. No one is going to judge you because guess what? They're wearing the cosplay too, so it's fine, right? Like, yeah. It was my first time cosplaying in public. It was my first convention. It was my first time going to a very, very big Star Wars event. Um, obviously, I went to Star Wars night that year as well, but Star Wars Celebration yeah. was a whole other thing. It was just so great. And like I told you, I have not met Hayden Christensen yet because he refuses to come to the West Coast, unfortunately. But I was several feet away from him and i was freaking out on the live stage when he said like Ooh, this is where the fun begins yes um, yeah, oh. i have that video and it's my favorite video of the day. you were in Ooh. the crowd when he was on stage and said that so while you were in the crowd you know how the photo ops was right by there I was standing in line for my photo op with Giancarlo. So I was watching that whole thing. So I got to hear it like live too. And I, oh, the crowd lost it. I was so happy. I got oh, to yeah. hear that live. Oh, such a, oh, such an experience. So amazing. So, so, so amazing. Celebration Anaheim is, is when I started my channel. My very first video is day one vlog at Anaheim celebration. So, the whole reason I started my channel was to cover celebration because there's so many fans that don't know what it is or they've never been. And my first celebration was Orlando 2017 exactly. and then Chicago 2019. And then after that, I'm like, man, I, I want to start recording this, this memories mm -hmm. and stuff. So started at Anaheim and Anaheim was so much fun. I got to go to the Obi-Wan Kenobi red carpet premiere that first night which was nuts to, and when we got in, we were front row. So we were front row and then Hayden and Hewan and Deborah Chow come out to kick it off. We watched the two episodes. Then the whole cast comes out on stage, even little Leia's running across. And it was just so cool to experience <laughs> that early with everybody. So yeah, I am a sucker for celebration. I'm going to Japan next year. So I'm planning that and covering that whole event. So I just, I love Celebration. And like you said, it's a place where you could go, everybody's happy, everybody's judgment-free, and everybody is a Star Wars nerd. Like, you could relate to pretty much everybody in there because they like some sort of Star Wars. So I cannot wait for the next Celebration. Like, we went to London last year, too, and 
I was very curious, like, how would a celebration in Europe be compared to the three that I did in the States? Like, is it going to be mm -hmm. different? Yo, it was the same exact feeling, the same thing. It felt like I was just at any other celebration, but just everybody's from all different parts of the world with different accents, but it felt the same. So I'm, I'm hyped for Japan because Japan should be like similar to that too. Oh yeah, I can imagine. I mean, my only experience is Star Wars Celebration in Anaheim. Um, of course, I'm biased and I want to say it should always be in Anaheim. And I will always say because it's across the street from Disney. So don't you want to go to Disney too? Right? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, but it was so much fun. And it's quite literally what have it's, it's such a, it's, it's an amazing memory. Like I've made so many memories. I made a lot of friends. I yep. made, oh my goodness. It was just, it's so amazing. I recommend that for literally anyone who's even on the edge of thinking about going to celebration. Yeah. I get it. Like Japan is in a different country, but the next time it's most likely going to be in the States. Like yep. if you can, anyone that's watching, if you can go to the one in the States, because if you're from the States, right. Oh yeah. my goodness. It is a, it's an experience you do not want to want to miss. It's just amazing. Everyone's there. All the Oh my goodness, all the panels. They're, it's not like a regular convention where you're like, I don't care about the panels. I'm just going there so I can go dress up and take pictures yep. and uh, socialize. This is different. Everyone is like bolting their way to the line. Everyone wants to get into these panels. Like, if you're not in these panels, you are missing the experience of Star Wars Celebration. But yeah, if you're on the edge and if you're really like trying to decide if it's worth it for you, it it 100% is worth it. I've only been to one. But you can tell them you've been to what three, four, four, four of them, four, right? Four of them, yeah. So, oh my goodness, yeah, yeah. Um, it's amazing. I want to go to Celebration Japan, but I have, I still have a lot of things to figure out. I'm still yeah. in college. I still have things to pay for. Yeah, um, yeah. And uh, it's kind of, kind of expensive going on your own. So I have to figure out a group and and all that and all that stuff too. And yeah. also going to a different country where I don't speak the language is going to be very difficult. I know. I'm scared. Very scared. Yeah, that that worried me, but my younger brother's coming with me and he's been like doing learning Japanese right now. Like he's so hyped, he's learning stuff now. So I'm just going to use him as my translator and like any like app on my phone and stuff. But that's the that's the only thing I was worried about is looking like a fool trying to order some food or figure out where's the bathroom, stuff like that, but I'm super hyped. It's just that flight over there from I'm in Florida, so it's like an 18-hour flight to get oh, yeah, over there imagine. which is nuts but i'm hyped for it of course and then i think so 2027 is the 50 year anniversary of a new hope so there has to be a celebration that year but i have a feeling 2026 they're gonna do one because we're supposed to get like one or two movies that year so it'd be kind of weird oh. to not have a celebration to promote these movies so i think we're gonna get back-to-back -back years in the states and i'm hoping they go to chicago and orlando Orlando, because that's right by me, so that's me being selfish like you. But Chicago, because Chicago 2019 was my favorite celebration out of all four I've been to, just because like the place was huge and I just had such a good experience there. I think what spoiled me with Chicago is we got Clone Wars Season 7 trailer, we got Mando trailer when Mando first dropped, we got Fallen Order trailer, so it was a lot of juicy stuff. 20th anniversary of Phantom Menace. So we had Ray Park and Ahmed Best on stage talking about it with Palpatine So and Anthony Daniels. So that panel was amazing. So that's my favorite. But Japan, so this is my dream. Because Japan is the 20-year anniversary of All Revenge right, of the right. Sith. Revenge of the uh -huh, Sith, right? This is why I want to go. <laughs> so if, if for some crazy way they get Natalie Portman to go and a panel with Hayden Hewen and Natalie, it would just be like my life would be complete if I get to see those three on stage talk about my favorite movie ever. Like, that would just blow my oh, mind. Yeah. And if they did photo ops and I could get a photo with Hayden and Natalie, oh, my God. That's just oh, yeah. unreal. Oh, my goodness. It's possible. I know. It's... <clears throat> I think, I don't know how true this is. I saw something, but obviously the internet spreads lies all the time, right? Yeah. But apparently, Natalie, it's open to projects with Star Wars, or was that a rumor? No. So I have two clips on my channel, because she said that twice now. She said that on two different like talk shows, 
And I clipped that out so quick. So like somewhere on my my reels on Instagram and my shorts on YouTube, I have those interviews. She said that twice now. So it's almost like she's like dropping the hint like, hey, Dave, like bring me in for a flashback or for something. Oh, and yeah. like it would work so good in Ahsoka season two for a flashback. Star Wars, what if? Star Wars, or, or, what if? Or, or that. <laughs> but like Ahsoka season two, the reason I say Ahsoka is ahsoka knows padme so you could do a flashback with clone wars hayden pregnant padme snips like oh, yeah. it would just be crazy so if they bring her back oh i would be that would just be amazing so amazing i would go to japan just for that just for that oh yeah. my goodness it would be a dream and especially like it makes sense in ahsoka right i know a lot of people will think of it as like um <clears throat> a cash grab but Fan service or Ahsoka's whatever yeah, Ahsoka's relationship with Padme in the Clone Wars was so, so warming. It was so lovely. Yeah. I loved it so, so much. And I think it would it would be really cool because not a lot of people touch on Padme and she did have a huge like impact in in the um the in the war as well. But you know, yeah. obviously the downfall of Anakin to to see that. Like it'd be yeah. kind of cool to just see like some kind of flashback of anything pregnant padme yes. i don't care i want to see any padme yes. i don't care if she's just in the background waving yeah i don't care i want to see her <laughs> Like in Clone Wars season seven, when we got that hologram and you saw Anakin talking to pregnant Padme, I was like, what? And then like, oh. wasn't like Rex at the door guarding? Cause you know that Rex knew and then Obi-Wan came. Yeah. Ah, stuff like that. <laughs> Imagine seeing that scene, but live action would be so cool. Oh, oh yeah. man. And there's so many things they can do and it doesn't need to feel like fan service. They could definitely add something. Yeah. Like what they did with, uh, in my opinion, what they did with Anakin in the in the Ahsoka show, I think that was very important to Ahsoka's character development. Yeah. So I think they could do something very similar, and even if it's not for Ahsoka's uh, character development, there's a lot of things they can do. And yeah, if she comes back, she's basically she's dropping hints left and right. She's like, "Hey guys, hey yeah. by the way, I know everyone wants me back." Bring me back. <laughs> I know, I know. Oh, ho hopefully they do. I guess we'll see. But so the next thing I want to talk about is Bad Batch episode nine, the Harbinger. So, what did you think of today's episode this morning? Oh my goodness! All right. Um, I don't know if you saw my my Instagram story or like anything that I had put in my channel, but oh my goodness, I was freaking out. I cannot believe it. Like, I genuinely, genuinely believe I have not been this excited or emotional or, or this attached to an episode in a very long time. Mm -hmm. Not since Plan 99. Plan 99 broke mm -hmm. me so much. Obviously, Tech, Woo! my favorite clone, seeing him just fly through the sky hurt me a lot. Um, yeah. But this episode was just like, it was very, very similar to me, um, feelings wise, to Cut and Run where mm -hmm. Omega's just trying to feel and find out who she is, try to find out what's going to happen in the future. She's very uncertain about a lot of things. And it was, oh my goodness, having Ventress back. Oh my goodness. Yeah. So oh, that I, I will say I have not read Dark Disciple, so mm -hmm. I don't know exactly what they're doing. This is supposed to take place before Dark, Dark Disciple. A um, after oh, it's, it's, it's after. after. Yeah, because oh in Dark, goodness. do you know what happens at the end of Dark Disciple? Yeah, she dies to uh, she, she dies, dies to Dooku's to age. Dooku. So at this point in Bad Batch, Dooku's dead because remember they raided his castle. You are right. You are so right. Yeah, yep. and you know what had me really confused when she said, "Oh, I still like you know." I think it was Hunter saying, "Oh, you're not scared of the Empire going after you," and she was like. Uh, I think I have enough, like, I have more uh, few, lives left. A few to lives live to live. Like yeah, yeah. So that's like teasing something. I think in Tales of the Jedi, it'll explain how she came back. Because she died at the end of the book, and they brought her to Dathomir, put her in, like, the, the pool of life or something. And then you hear yeah. a bunch of a night sisters chanting. So clearly she was resurrected. But, like, I want to, like, see, like, how that happened and all that stuff. Oh, yeah. It would make sense to have that in like the second season of Tales of the Jedi. Yeah. But it was so cool seeing her back. And I'm a sucker for yellow lightsabers. I love yellow and purple, like my two favorite lightsaber colors. And, yeah. <clears throat> excuse me. Um, yeah, it was just 
so cool and obviously i'm a lightsaber nerd so i'm yeah. casually waiting for them to make that lightsaber so i can have it myself um so it was really cool seeing her just full on gag the boys in the bad batch like they tried so hard stood no oh. chance and i was like a part of me like yes i love the bad batch i love them so so much but a part of me was like they better not dis ventress and show her like lacking it in any way. Because yeah, yeah. But Be- Ventress would not lack at all. She, no one stands a chance. No clone stands a chance mm-mm, against her at mm-mm. all. And she, she proved us, you know, she proved us right. And oh my goodness, that was so cool. And then seeing how she kind of cares about uh, Omega a bit, like she's uh, yeah. obviously being a little mysterious, but she's caring a bit to the point where Omega's like, you like us, you know, <laughs> uh, you care, you like us. And yeah. That was really cool, and the whole possible force sensitivity thing with Omega, I'm kind of iffy on. I don't yeah. personally want her to be a Jedi. Um, if she is force sensitive, there's definitely different ways to to go about her storyline. Yeah, she can be force sensitive, but I don't think she should be a Jedi personally. Um, mm-hmm. Just because it would be really cool to see like Omega grow up, be force sensitive, and not have a lightsaber and use the force in different ways. Kind of like yeah. what we saw like Ezra in the Ahsoka show, where he was like, yeah. nah, I'm good. I don't need a lightsaber. Whoa, yeah. And everything. yeah, yeah. So that would be really cool. Um it was they were kind of hinting at what well, I think she was kind of hinting at her lying on about her about Omega being force sensitive to Omega. Yeah, yeah, yeah. At the end, was, yeah. Was that that? It was kind of confusing. I watched the episode like three times already, and I I struggled to really take in this information. But there's yeah. obviously there was so much in that episode. But yeah, it seems like she is force sensitive. But for her own safety, Ventress is not telling her that, or like because she also knows like she has a huge attachment to the boys, so yeah, she wouldn't want to leave them. Yeah, I thought that same so, thing. Yeah. Like she she kind of lied to Omega. But then when Omega left, she told them that she needs to be trained, but she, her, her attachment to you is too strong. And that kind of gave yeah. me like Ahsoka and Grogu vibes from Mando when they brought Grogu to Ahsoka. She tried training him and she was like, I can't train him. His attachment is too strong. So oh, I, yeah. I had that feeling right away. And then I kind of also got the feeling that um, Asajj kind of like felt something in omega kind of like when qui-gon first met anakin and he felt it in him like i think she kind of knows and feels it but what i want is like another show and i want omega to be with asajj and i want asajj to train omega but not like a traditional jedi because i don't want that but like asajj has learned from jedi from sith from dooku and from night sister so she could like teach Omega like a little bit of everything and she could kind of be just like a rogue force user like learning everything from her you know something like cool and different like that I wouldn't mind seeing but I love this freaking episode I'm glad we got a Saj right away in the beginning with that jump scare in the cave oh and um record was so funny in in the background with all his comments like when they were training and Wrecker's like, you can do it. I was like, oh my God. <laughs> and then when he, when he had the binoculars and he zoomed in on Asajj and Asajj looked right at him, how does she know I'm watching? Like, it was just so, <laughs> so, so many great moments in this episode. The only thing I was like, a little not salty about, but I wish we would have got more of like, like Asajj, how the heck did you survive? I know you died in this book. Like, how are you here? But... I know they're going to give that to us either in tales or another show. So that's coming for sure. But it was such a banger right. episode. Such a banger. Oh, it was such a good int- like reintroduction to her character. So I mm-hmm. think it was quite literally perfect to have her be mysterious because everyone's like, what's what's going on? Like, yeah, like, you're a perfect example. Now everyone's like, how would she like what's going on? Right. So it makes you yeah. like watch that episode and then it makes you excited for whatever other show is going to come along and it's going to have an explanation or a little arc for her specifically. So I think it was done very smart. Um, I think her, her story, her little like mysterious, like uh, mysterious little era um, in the bad batch was just perfect. I, I, I don't necessarily think we need more than just one episode for her. Um, yeah. In the bad batch. I think that was just so perfect to leave it at that. 
now like the Bad Batch knows what midichlorians are. They know what Jedi are. It was so funny seeing Omega being like, I'm a Jedi. The like, Jedi? Oh my yeah, goodness. Yeah. That was so yeah. funny. It was so cute. I <laughs> It was so, uh, it was amazing. Yeah, um, I love the fact she said midichlorians because I'm I was so sick of like M count. Like, come on, we know you mean midichlorians, just say it. So I was glad she said it. My favorite scene though with Asajj was when Omega came back to the cave and you had Crosshair knocked out, you had the saber to Hunter's throat, and she was forced choking Wrecker. I'm like, yo, that is Asajj Ventures. <laughs> She is a savage. That site was like, yo, like she is badass. I freaking love Asajj. So glad she's back. I don't oh, yeah. care if it changes the book or whatever they come up with. I'm happy. So earlier today, my buddy Will, he sent me, I guess, uh, the voice actor for Asajj. She did another interview, right? So she said in this, uh, we had several discussions about the book and how her story could continue. How she survived will be revealed in future content, but for this story of Bad Badge, we were thrilled to include her and explore her unique connection to and compassion for Omega. They found a way to continue her story. I think they must have discovered that the fans really love this character and they want her around, which makes me very happy because I love her too. So that's awesome to hear. She's been spilling so much on other podcasts. Did you hear what she said on one podcast about we're getting a lot of Asajj? Um, I didn't hear that specific podcast, but I did see some comments on like some videos about Ventress and how she could be back. And someone was like, wait, I, I don't like that. They're giving her all that much or like, they're not giving her enough attention. They're like, Hey guys, don't worry. Like the, the voice actress said that there's going to be a lot more content. What we see in Bad Batch is just like a snippet of it. And I yeah. heard about that through that. And I wasn't sure how accurate it was. And obviously it is now. And oh, it's yes. very, very exciting because we're going to be able to see not a Jedi, not a Sith, and not really a knight. Like, she is a knight sister, but, like, she's yeah. also kind of separated from that. So just seeing someone who's more sensitive and kind of pushed everything else off to the side, I think that's going to be really, really cool. I'm excited. She's, so excited. She's just like a, like a Ronin doing whatever she wants, which is yeah. awesome. But I hunted down that podcast and I listened to it because, like, I heard about it, but I'm like, no, I want to hear what she said. And what she yeah. said, and I clipped it out, too, because it just made me so happy. But she said that Asajj in the Bad Batch is just an appetizer, that there might be an entree and a dessert coming, which to me is like, OK, three things. Appetizers, Bad Batch. Is entree like a new spinoff show? And is dessert her and Tales of the Jedi season two? Like, it literally only makes sense. I think it's the other way around. I want to say Entree, obviously, is going to be Bad Batch. I think Tales of the Jedi and then, like, her own show would be the dessert because everyone's waiting for that. Yeah. Um, that would be genuinely very cool. I do feel bad for the fans who really like Dark Disciple. Um, I know, but then again, I know. like, the writers of the Bad Batch did say that they're going to make sure that that's as accurate as possible. Yep. And as long as that whole night sister drowning thing, like <laughs> night sister baptism thing yeah, um, yeah. is how she gets resurrected. It doesn't affect anything in the book. And then that way also the book readers and huge like Asajj, uh, Asajj fans are, you yeah. know, they're, they're content with that and nothing is actually affected in Canon. And then she also gets more because yeah. obviously like who doesn't want to see, the com like it's so cool seeing Anakin turn to the dark side. We want to see a really well written story of like someone going from dark to light, and not really light, but like you know a realistic. Yeah, light. yeah, yeah. Not like blinded and by the order. <laughs> no, for sure. I like. I want to. I hope in the finale, whatever happens, because you know it's probably not going to end good for the most part, sadly. But like, it would be cool if Asajj did come back to get Omega. And she's with Quinlan, and they take us uh, Omega to the path because we know in the Kenobi show, supposedly Quinlan was running like you know four sensitives through the path. Yeah. So that'd be kind of cool if they connected that, and we and we see some of that in the next show. Like Omega's there with a bunch of like four sensitive people trying to get used to living with them instead of clones and stuff like that. That'd be really interesting to see something like that. Oh yeah, even if she doesn't like stay with Ventress or continue her whole poor sensitivity like journey. I still, I don't know. I think you saw, yeah, you mentioned you saw my video and like what I would hope would happen in the Bad Batch. Like I want her to somehow end up meeting Boba. 
So if Ventress is going to be the bridge to meeting Boba, I want that to happen. So if she's like, you know what? Being a Jedi, being force sensitive is not for me. uh, Ventress is like, you know what? The only person that I know you could go with is your brother. So here you go. And I think that would be really cool. And then you can obviously introduce, I I talked about like the the voice actress of Emily Carr, who um, is the older sister of Omega who also yeah. looks like a perfect live action Omega to have her yeah. introduced into the Mandoverse or something else. That would be amazing. That would be so great. So there's so many things they could do with her story. And like, I don't really have, I'm not going to be disappointed with whatever they do with her as long as they continue her story. If they kill her off and they, they pull a row one, I'm done with Star Wars. <laughs> I'm done. Uh uh-uh. uh. Oh. I'm sorry. You don't, you don't bring a comfort character that that brought me so much joy and then just kill her off no 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 i would be done i will never watch anything again i i so i thought there was a chance that she could but after today's episode it's kind of like they're building up so much with her giving her so much potential i think she's probably going to be the only one to survive besides rex gregor and wolf who have to survive because of rebels but um like Boba and during during the live earlier today, we were like talking about that. Like, when's Boba gonna show up? Cause like we know Cad Bane's gonna pop up. Is it like is that episode is it gonna be like Boba and Cad Bane are both have the bounty to try to get her? Cause we know Cad Bane and Boba mm-hmm. had beef in the past. We know in, in Dark Disciple, Asajj goes to Boba twice to help her with stuff. So we know Asajj and Boba have that relationship too. And like Daniel Logan voice mocks in that third episode, like you're telling me you had Daniel yeah. Logan voice recording and you didn't say, hey, read these Boba Fett lines because you're going to be in a future episode. Like he he has to yeah. show up like he has to. Oh, so yeah. and like, I don't know if you follow Daniel Logan on Instagram, but this man is reposting everybody saying is Boba going to be in Bad Batch and art of Boba and Bad Batch and stuff like uh-huh. crazy. I've seen so, it all. <laughs> yeah, so I'm I'm just waiting for the episode. Um, yeah, I, and I cannot wait. I'm gonna be so hyped. I'm curious to see what version of his armor he's gonna have on. And I also want it from the point of the story, because like we know in Empire, Boba is one of the the Empire's like uh, um, badass bounty hunters that they call to all the time. So I want to see how did he get that job because he's obviously cool with Vader working for vader so are we going to see him establish that relationship with the empire here early on that he has up until empire strikes yep. back so there's a lot of dope stuff that could happen in these next what is it six episodes and i'm just i'm all here for it i know it is i think it's seven more episodes right there's 16 episodes total i believe what? no no it's 15 so i i, I got think... the list i got the oh, list 15. right here Yes, fifteen, which is one short. You're right, than the other because two. I complained about it. Yeah, mm-hmm. but I remember next... complaining about how short it was. <laughs> yeah, they, yeah, they snubbed us an episode. Which, come on, but next week we get two. So episode ten is called Identity Crisis, and episode eleven is Point of No Return. So you know, with these crazy titles, it always is like reference to like two or three things. It's not like one person because like Identity Crisis, you would assume. Oh, it's Omega. She thinks she's a Jedi. She doesn't know. But like, what if Boba pops up in this episode and she meets Boba? That could be identity crisis. It could be like crosshair with that uh, Winter Soldier, freaking clone X, whatever they're called. So next week, I think we're getting two bangers. What do you think we'll see next week? Um, I don't know about the the episode after that, but identity crisis. Dare I say this is the delusional part of me, the delusional tech fan. But oh, maybe, yeah. You think he's yeah, alive? Yeah, you know what I'm thinking. You think he's I do, alive? I do. And like, I, you know what sucks? Yeah, you know what sucks? It's like, I've heard a lot, a lot of videos and a lot of people talk about how they don't think he's that clone. I think it's like CX2 or whatever it is. Yeah, yeah, um, CX2. They don't think yeah. that's him. Like, they don't think it's him or they don't think he's alive. And you know what sucks? A lot of those reasons make a lot of sense and it hurts yeah. admitting that as a as a tech is a live believer right but mm-hmm. i yeah i still think he's alive somehow and um maybe if it's not even him maybe if it's not that cx2 clone but i'm a strong believer and i'm really hoping 
we might get a little bit of a touch of him in that Identity Crisis episode, or at Ooh. least like more information on who the heck is CX2 because all yeah. the other clones, those assassin clones, they've all been like off really easily. They they have not been putting too much like emphasis on their character, but this one specifically. Bro yes. survived a Black Panther fight over a waterfall fell yep. down and yep. like oh my goodness like no clone no character has that much emphasis on them that much plot uh -uh. armor unless yeah. there's a good reason so yes this is the, the delusional part in me um but i just i've seen all the arguments why tech should be you know should stay the way that he is yeah. not alive um and I could argue both ways, which is why this sucks so much. I could I could argue and say, yeah, Tech's dead. There's no way he's coming back. I mm -hmm. can argue why he's alive. So it sucks because that's I feel like that's the kind of person I am. I can always argue both sides. And it sucks yeah. when you just like your heart is somewhere else. Like my heart yeah. is telling me Tech is alive. Like, ah, uh, yeah. Oh, it's man. it's a little stressful. I don't I try to go into these episodes and not really have high expectations. I don't yeah. I don't go into it and I'm like, I hope this happens or this this better be really good. This better not be a uh, a filler episode. So I'm like, no. Like what I've been doing to really enjoy this is the exact same thing I did in season one. I'm excited for next week. That's it. Yep. I yep. don't go about like listening to other people's opinions. I don't really talk about the show as much as like in season two, I talked about it a lot. And unfortunately a lot of people ruined the experience for you because mm. especially Star Wars Twitter. Um, oh God. So yeah. yeah. So I learned from my past experiences, if I really want to enjoy something, I need to kind of just keep the details to myself, not yeah. listen to a lot of people's opinions and just be excited for the next week. Like don't have many expectations because obviously like, I, I don't think I can ever be dissatisfied with what the writers are going to do because they've done such an amazing job so far. I trust yeah. them. Whatever they're doing, it's for good reason. And I'm I'm leaving it up to them. Obviously, they already did everything, but you know what I mean? Yeah. <laughs> um, so do you think yeah. we're gonna do you think we're gonna see Vader at all? I do not think so. I also don't want that. I yeah. know this kind of hurts a lot of people, but <laughs> I am kind of tired of having Vader show up in nearly every single piece of media. <laughs> like, he hasn't shown up in Mando, obviously, yeah. for obvious reasons. But, yeah. like, uh, yeah, like, he's like, <laughs> hello, Timeline. Uh, but, you know, other things, like, he's shown up in so many things when he doesn't necessarily need to be there. And I yeah, feel like yeah. it just doesn't make any sense for Vader to show up in um, in the Bad Batch, the one thing that did make sense was obviously Palpatine because the whole cloning experiment. Yeah, and yeah. Also, like if Vader shows up, he would have to know something about the cloning exper experiment, mm. and I feel like that would kind of mess up like Palpatine's That's like true. whole sequel, like cloning thing. So yeah, yeah. I I feel like we don't need a good show to be a good show just because of vader like i yeah. i've seen so many people be like oh i want vader to show up i'm like we don't need him we really don't i think we should just leave it as this the whole focus on this show was like less jedi more clones and yeah. cloning so leave it at that and that's gonna be great we vader has nothing to do with clones like not really like there's not like he's not actively working in in that because it's all like secret right yeah, um, yeah and there's not a lot of like jedi references obviously i mean if you count like the whole midichlorian thing thing but i don't think omega is going to become a jedi so i don't yeah i don't see this being something very important like you said it could be something where like boba fett comes in and he builds yeah. up his reputation in the show a little bit um and maybe that's where we'll get maybe like a uh, a calm or like some kind of like a hologram of vader talking yeah. to like one of the bounty hunters but if he were to show up i don't think he would have a, a huge impact in it it would just be like a little a little taste um yeah yeah i, I know that sucks that. to hear <laughs> no, no no like you're 100 you're 100 right but like in my mind, there's only like two two reasons I would want him to show up and it would just be nuts. But one of them would be like if it's the finale 
and the clones are like because there has to be a big clone battle there's going to be a clone uprising eventually in one of these episodes but like imagine if the finale was like a big uprising whether it's mount tantus or somewhere else and the clones are winning and like palps is like vader go there now and vader just shows up and wipes them all out like that would kind of be crazy it'd be sad but like you know if vader shows up they have no chance but yeah, they the don't have a chance <laughs> But the reason I want Vader to show up for some reason is I would love to see Asajj pop back up and, like, try to save Omega and, like, Asajj kind of get a rematch with Anakin because she fought Anakin so many times in the Clone Wars and she mm -hmm. was bad and he was like, now it's, like, reverse. That'd be kind of crazy if they if he showed up and she was like, Anakin? And, like, they had... Because she could hold her own for a little bit against Vader, but she's not going to win. But she could hold her own and then escape like she always did. I think that would be sick to get a rematch of Ventress and Anakin. I've seen a lot of people say that they, they think it's going to end with Vader just wiping them out. <laughs> and um, as much as that would be really funny, I think the only time that Vader should have wiped someone out. This is kind of off topic, but that was in um, Fallen Order when Seer was like thrown off. Oh, that should yes. have been end game for her. Yes. That should have been end game. Yes. But um, yeah, like my question is for you though, is does Ventress know that Vader is Anakin? I, I don't think so, but I wonder if she would sense it in, in him potentially, or if, if, uh, Vader would say something slick to her, like, oh, we meet again, Asajj, or something like that. And maybe she would, I, I mean, yeah. I don't know. T technically, not many people in canon know Vader is Anakin. There's very few people. But if it were to happen and, like, she would sense it or if he were, like, to say some slick shit, that just would be so cool. That's super fan service though. Like, you don't need it for the story. <laughs> I'm, I'm just being selfish because, like, after this, like, I mean, we should get another animated clone style show, but if we don't, it's like I'm gonna be sad for a while. Oh yeah, it is. Um, hmm. I don't know. I don't. I don't know how he would show up in in the show. Like, I mean, it kind of it makes sense in a bunch of other shows, but yeah. Oh no, that, for sure. I don't, uh, I don't know, man. I don't know. Um, yeah. I will say it would, it would be kind of funny, but because I love this show so much, I would hate to see the Bad Batch just like be wiped out super easily. Like there needs to be a good fight. Like you said, the clone uprising. Like, yeah, yeah, I yeah. really hope that does happen because it'd be so cool to see like one last time, see the whole Bad Batch fight together with the Bad Batch theme song in the background. Yep. <laughs> yep. <laughs> yeah. And that would be so, so cool. But yeah, when it comes to Vader, like, I'm really hoping they just keep him away from this story. Um, mm -hmm. And if they bring him in, he has a very small role because I think yeah. this is such an important, like this is, this is a clone show. So I want to yeah. keep it to the clones. <laughs> what do you think? So some people have been speculating that, do you think there's a chance that Grand Admiral Thrawn could pop up? Cause I know I haven't read the legends books, like the heir to the empire and stuff, but I know it involves Mount Tantis, Thrawn, and cloning. So, like, it would make sense for that because, like, it, it it happened. So, like, imagine if you see something with Thrawn on Mount Tantis. I'm pretty sure he knows the Emperor because Thrawn knew Anakin as well. Yeah. Yeah, they know each yeah, other. Yeah, they, they did work together. Um, so Honestly, like, I never, never even thought about that. Like, to me, I think Thrawn with Rebels. Yeah, I of course. Think, like and then a little bit of an Anakin, right? I don't think yeah. of him with Bad Bat, so I never really thought about that. Um, like I also did not read the books. Um because I don't know. I, I have a lot of friends who are very, very into the Thrawn books, and I definitely yeah. should bring this up with them and ask them yeah. like, Hey, it make what's sense. going on? Like, what was what was his part in this whole cloning and Tantus thing? I was not even aware that he was on Tantus or anything like that. Um, yeah, it would be really cool. I will say that. Especially if he had already had some kind of connection to Mount Tantus and cloning. But if he didn't yeah. have any connection with that, again, it would feel a little bit like oh, yeah, service. Yeah. yeah. And um yeah, honestly, before this before this conversation, I never even had that pop in my into my head. Like I I never even thought about Thrawn being a possible thing um to show up in 
be so interesting to see him in Clone Wars animation, though. Yeah, I was just about so to say weird. that. It'd be sick to, <laughs> it might be sick to see him like that, but like in season two, what's his what's his name showed up in it? Krennic showed up, and I think one of Thrawn's uh -huh. right hand man wasn't what's his name? Yularen wasn't he there too? Admiral I, Yularen. Yeah, I, I'm pretty sure he was there with Krennic and a bunch of other people. So uh -huh. I, there's little connections. I I mean. Anything's possible, but I don't know if it happened. But I, I'm just being greedy because I would love to see Thrawn in this Clone Wars Bad Batch animation style. I think it would be cool to see him, even if it's for like a little like a council meeting or if it's a hologram and they're just talking about how the yeah. cloning is going over there. So, yeah, I guess we'll see. That, that would be very interesting. I will say it'll be very, very weird to see him in that animation. But <laughs> yeah, that, that is something I've never thought about before. I, I definitely have to talk to some friends about that now because they've read all the books and they're like full on Thrawn fans, right? Yeah. Uh, they yeah. try to get me into it and I just struggle so much with reading. I don't know what it is. Mm. I think it's that attention span thing, you know? Yeah. Um, and like whenever I read, I go back and then I go forward and I mess it up. But yeah, I need to talk about that. I've never considered that at all. Yeah. I never thought yeah. I, would, I would even think about that today. <laughs> So the last thing I want to talk about is future Star Wars projects coming up that you're looking forward to. So we have Tales of the Jedi Season 2, Acolyte, and Skeleton Crew potentially all this year. What are you looking forward to the most out of those? Ooh, okay. I will say, even though there's not a lot of things being said about Skeleton Crew, that's mm -hmm. going to be pretty interesting. I do have a friend of mine, or a little mutual of mine, who also who's super hyped up about that. Um, but I don't know enough about it to really like say that I'm excited for it a lot. Nobody does. Um, I will say, yeah, like they haven't said much. They kind of mentioned it, like what two two times at most, and never again. And uh, Tales of the Jedi was Tales of the Jedi was just so great. I loved mm. it so much. And if they end up doing what they do with Ventress or like anything else that would be amazing but i will yeah. say the acolyte that oh my goodness that trailer was so good so yes. so good and then yes. seeing oh my goodness seeing like this is taking place at the like the fall of the high republic right like that's and yeah and we're going into the skywalker saga and seeing yep. that happen because oh my goodness that would be so so cool and the sith rising and oh i i whew. I have nothing but excitement to really voice out about that show. I'm like, like just like I am with I am with the with the majority of Star Wars projects. I try to go in go into it with an open mind and not yeah, have any yeah. expectations. That's how I am. I'm just excited, and I know it's going to be good. The tone of it of the show just looks so so great. Also, yeah. did you notice that the um. There's this one girl. Did you watch the Hunger Games? Um, like maybe like one of them a long time ago. I don't remember it at all. Do you okay? There's this one like uh one girl who was like she's from there, be, right? Yeah. So she, the one of the actresses is in the Hunger Games, mm -hmm. and the moment I noticed, I was like, oh my god, she's Rue from the Hunger Games. Like yeah. that's so cool. The cast. The lineup, oh my god, it's gonna be so good. Yeah, the tone of the show, all the lightsabers, and all of that. Like, obviously, I like oh, yeah. the zoom, 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 and I love the action. So, for me, that's a big plus. Um, I'm just super excited for that. So, I didn't expect me, I didn't expect to be this excited until I saw that trailer. That trailer, amazing advertisement. <laughs> yeah, I love that trailer. So, at London Celebration last year, we saw an Acolyte trailer, and I was hyped from that one. Now, this one was pretty much a lot more different new footage, and this one mm -hmm. has me even more hyped. So I'm looking forward to it, too. It's crazy the amount of hate the trailer's getting. Like, it makes no sense and stuff. So you haven't Why? seen, like, so, like, the if you look at the trailer, it has, like, half a million dislikes. It's, like, crazy. Yeah, because, like, some stupid oh, controversy stuff. Yeah, and it's like, yo, this trailer was lit. The end of the trailer, when that red saber came, zhu, 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 that person caught it, and then you see eight Jedi light up their saber and run towards this potential Sith, and they force push them all back. 
I was like, yo, I want to see this Sith. I want to see how strong they are. How did they learn how to do that? That's one versus eight, and he knocked them out. Like, I am hyped. So I'm oh, looking yeah. forward to it. I mean, there are some things that could worry me, but I'm just going to wait to see because, like, I want them to connect it to the Phantom Menace in a way and the stuff that came right. before it, like with Plagueis and, like, stuff from the Old Republic because, like, they should reference, like, Bane and Revan and Malik, like they should name drop all those people because, like, if this is about the Sith uprising, like Bane started the Ruler Two back in those books and all that stuff. Like, I haven't read a lot of that stuff, but I did read Plagueis, and in Plagueis, they name drop those guys all the time. So I kind of like expect to see some of that stuff, and like it's a hundred years before Phantom Menace, so literally, uh, Palpatine, no Plagueis, who was Palpatine's master. Plagueis' yeah. master is the one that should be alive running around. So, like, they kind of... Like, That's what kinda, I was thinking, too. Yeah, so hopefully they they pay homage to that. If not, I just hope it's a good story and it's Star Wars. And from the trailer, it feels and looks like Star Wars. So yeah. I'm I'm good. I'm looking forward to it. So I will say, like, I saw... Um, I think it was one of the writers or the producers. Someone said it was it was a woman. She was like, this is not, like, your regular Star Wars. And yeah. for me, I was like, this is going to be good that if it's not like a regular different. Star Wars, because it's yeah. going to be different. And I'm really wondering, like, what are all those hate comments about? Because like, uh, the, the, so the, the 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 main lady, like in a, a interview a long time ago, she said something about like George Lucas and about the prequels, like and like some of it's kind of out of context. Some of it's kind of like, OK, that's her opinion from five years ago. Like whatever. People say dumb shit all the time. I have plenty of friends that say dumb shit, but they're good people and they do good things. So this yeah. show, this show could be fire. And I, I think it, if it is, people are still going to hate regardless. So like, I mean, whatever, I'm going to have fun watching it on June 5th. Yeah. And, and I'm so glad it's going back to Tuesday, like Ahsoka, 9 p.m. for me, 6 p.m. for you. Like, ah, oh, because me waking up at 2.30 a.m. to watch it at 3 a.m., this is not fun for Bad Batch, man. Oh, tough. <laughs> It's rough. I know. We talked about that earlier. And I will say, like, if it was gonna if it, if it was gonna be at like three in the morning for you East Coast people, it should have been like Friday nights, like Saturday mornings or whatever. Yeah. Like how yeah. the way it used to be, or I think it's like Yeah. It's like Thursday. It used to be Fridays. Fridays but yeah. 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 So Oh my goodness. Yeah. I I'm gonna go into this into all the projects coming in this year with just an open mindset and just ignoring yeah. everyone else's opinion. Like I know it is very important to talk about what you love with other people and you get yeah, like, yeah. outside perspectives, but it all depends how they go about saying and voicing that to you. And honestly, exactly. A lot of the, of the fandom just is not the vibe. Like they're not people oh, I would personally no. want to ever interact with. And I want to make sure that if I love something, I'm going to love it because of how I experienced it, not just because yeah. of some some other people. They they're overhyping it, or I'm not going to hate it because of other people's opinions. I'm going to yeah. experience it myself and then read into it later to kind of like mm -hmm. see the critiques about it. But yeah, um, I'm very excited. It's going to be a good year for Star Wars. All the events that they're having. I mean, um, Star Wars Night Alone, and then the mm. whole Phantom Menace and the whole Skywalker saga in theaters. I'm gonna go yep. see, so I'm gonna sit in theaters for 20 hours. Oh my goodness! Damn, um, that's crazy. I know, I know it's it's gonna be painful. I don't know if I'm gonna stay for all the sequels, but um, yeah, yeah, I'm gonna try my best, try my best to stay there, and I'm gonna try to vlog my experience. But by the Ooh. end of, I guarantee by hour eight, you're gonna see the biggest RBF on my face. <laughs> <laughs> oh man but, that's too funny yeah they're doing a lot of things and all these events like the whole empire thing that they had in uh new york city so and cool. i know they're gonna do more for the year like they're really hyping it up and i'm yeah. very happy that star wars is starting to feel like star wars again and i yeah. i couldn't be more excited for this year i know the projects are not necessarily what people are really expecting like a lot of people don't care so much about skeleton crew like it's a story yeah. about four kids or something but I still think it's gonna be very interesting and it's nice seeing these different takes on star wars so i'm excited for what's to come and i'm just gonna keep an open open mindset and that's yeah. that's my plan for the year 
No, for sure. So that's pretty much everything I had. What do you have coming up next on your Instagram or YouTube that the people could look forward to? Who, honestly? Oh my goodness. Um, I don't necessarily have like big content plans. Uh, with the exception, oh. So if you're going to Star Wars night on May 2nd, to anyone that's mm. in California, um, I will be doing Star Wars trivia and giving away as many lightsabers as, as I possibly can bring into the park. Uh, nice. So I'll be doing that. I'll be going to WonderCon this weekend. Um, nice. I don't think I'll be cosplaying, but I don't know if I'll vlog it either, but I'm going to be going yeah. to that. Um, as always, you can always expect like, giveaways and regular like lightsaber content and everything that i do like humor videos um yeah but honestly i think the two biggest youtube things that i really want to do is the season finale season finale of bad batch i really want to record my reactions so Ooh, hopefully yeah, it's been so hard big. recently because i've been so busy on wednesdays but yeah yeah i really want to do that and i am hoping i can sit down with two of my uh, two of my friends slash mutuals who are also really huge uh, fans of the Bad Batch. She went to the premiere as well and kind of just like do it, do a bit of a just a, a little interview and talk about um, all three seasons of the Bad Batch. That would be yeah. really cool. And then, of course, vlogging my experience being in the theaters for 20 hours watching yeah. the entire Skywalker saga. It's going to be very difficult. Well, thank goodness I have my friends going with me because otherwise... Oh my goodness, that is that, that would be really hard to do. Yeah. Oh my god, I'm not ready for that at all. Um, but yeah, I'm always active on on Instagram on my stories and like especially on my channel. And I feel like my content can be a little fun at times. So tune in on that. And uh, yeah, um, it's kind of all over the place, but yeah. I try my best. <laughs> awesome. So you guys watching, be sure to go check her out. The links will be down in the description. Well, Marley, thank you so much for coming on. It was a blast. Oh, my goodness. Thank you so much for having me here. Ah, it felt so nice talking about something I love. So thank yes. you for showing so much of an in interest and in just welcoming me. Uh, so thank you a lot. <laughs> of course. And that's going to be it for this episode of SIF Talk, guys. We'll see you guys next week. Bye, guys. Bye. <laughs>